Hello and welcome to part two of our Research 101 series. In the previous episode, we discussed finding a research topic. In this episode, we'll be exploring information, what it is, and some of the ways we sort through it. In order to do this, we will talk a little about how the ways information has been recorded and shared over time. We'll talk about the different types of sources out there and how their characteristics determine how you'll end up using them. Finally, we'll also consider the different audiences for which information is created and how this affects their content and the way you might use them. To begin with, let's talk a little about information. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines information as knowledge gained from investigation, study, or instruction. Put simply, information is the product created by humans when we attempt to understand existence and describe it to each other. And we have been doing this for a very long time. Visual representations of this communication survive to the present in the form of pictographs and cave paintings. In addition to these symbolic and immovable representations of information, cultures without written languages relied on oral traditions in which stories and songs preserved the knowledge and traditions and beliefs of the people. Several thousand years ago, we developed a new way to record and share information with each other, written language. Writing made it possible to record information independent of the human mind. Further innovations, such as the invention of paper and later the printing press, revolutionized not only how we preserved information, but also massively increased our ability to share that information. The speed and ease with which we could share printed materials made them extremely affordable, allowing even wider circulation. Wider circulation ultimately led to greater literacy, which in turn led to still higher demand for more printed information and the recording and sharing of an even wider variety of, an ide of ideas and voices. The advent of the internet further revolutionized the way we shared information. Prior to the digital revolution, publishing or broadcasting information on a vast scale required either a lot of money or connections to someone who had access to technology. With the internet and the advent of social media, Everyone has a soapbox and a megaphone and create and share whatever they want. There are clearly both benefits and drawbacks to this new information environment. On the one hand, we can now hear from the most diverse and varied collection of voices and ideas in the history of our species. On the other hand, this multitude of voices includes lies, hatred, and frankly, a lot of noise. So having moved from an age of information scarcity to one of information overload, how do we sort through it all? There are a lot of different ways to sort and classify information, and we're not going to attempt to go through them all here. Instead, we're going to focus on two methods, the type of source and the audience it's directed towards. When we talk about source types, we're talking about the relationship of a source to the circumstances of its creation and how that affects what gets recorded. We break information up into three types of sources, primary, secondary, and reference sources. Primary sources are first-hand accounts of an event or phenomenon by someone who witnessed it. Some examples of this include diaries or blogs, correspondence, including emails, social media postings, personal papers, newspaper reports, live video or audio, and much more. There is one important exception to this definition of primary sources. In the sciences, primary literature is defined as the peer-reviewed record of an experiment or study and is usually published as a journal article. In the modern era, primary sources may be created as the events they chronicle occur. However, prior to the invention of the technologies that made live recording possible, they were recorded after the fact, but as they were first-hand accounts, they generally had to be recorded within the lifetime of the witnesses. Because they are first-hand accounts, primary sources tend to have a narrow perspective, focusing on a single individual's experiences and recollections. As such, they also tend to be biased, as they are subject to the recorder's prejudices and worldview. Finally, primary sources may lack context as the recorder may not know how significant the event they're recording actually is. With some exceptions, it is usually only with hindsight that we realize whether or not an event is important. For example, the experiences of any single soldier on a battlefield are going to be rather narrowly focused on achieving their assigned objective and not getting killed. They won't necessarily know what's going on outside their narrow range of vision, won't know exactly what the ultimate importance of that battle was, and aren't likely to care a whole lot about the opposing side's point of view. Secondary sources are accounts of an event or phenomenon created by gathering a variety of primary sources and bringing them together into a wider narrative. 
Because there are multiple points of view, secondary sources tend to be more objective than primary sources. Secondary sources also usually place the event they're discussing into context, explaining why it was significant or important. Remember our soldier from the primary source example? Now what happens if 20 years after the battle, a historian interviews him, along with many of his comrades, and soldiers on the opposite side, and places that battle into the context of the larger war and what happened afterwards? Suddenly, you get a much bigger picture of what happened during the battle and why it mattered than you would get from the perspective of any single individual on the field where it occurred. As primary sources have to already exist in order to create a secondary source, there will be some delay between an event and the creation of a secondary source about it. This delay may range from weeks to millennia. Examples of secondary sources include books, journal articles for disciplines outside of the sciences, and documentary films. Finally, we have reference sources. As the significance of events or phenomena become more and more apparent, people need sources that will provide them with the basic facts in order to familiarize themselves with the topic. Reference sources, such as dictionaries, encyclopedias, including Wikipedia, atlases and indexes provide brief, basic information on a topic to introduce a researcher to it. Entries in a reference source tend to be short and factually heavy. They may involve a general collection of facts on almost any topic, think Wikipedia, or they may be focused on a specific topic or discipline. Another way to sort through information is to consider who it is being presented to. The type of audience information is intended for directly affects the type and amount of information conveyed. Scholarly sources are sources written by experts in a specific field or discipline and are intended to be consumed by other experts. They may include reports on the results of experiments, studies, or research of some sort. Publication of scholarly sources tends to be strictly controlled and subject to peer review, which we'll talk about more in part four of this series. Generally speaking, scholarly sources are heavy on text with few ads or pictures. Trade sources are written by individuals involved in a particular trade or profession, such as potato farming. No, seriously, potato farming. These sources discuss issues going on in that particular trade, industry, and profession, and are subject only to, the, to editorial review to ensure that everything published is checked for style and that the publisher cannot be sued for publishing it. Ads in these sources tend to be focused on items of interest to that particular group, so in the case of potato farmers, they could include seed, farm equipment, and pesticides. Popular sources are sources created by either journalists or amateurs for a general audience and tend to discuss issues of general interest, such as pop culture, news, gossip, and so forth. Popular sources value timeliness over accuracy, meaning that it is often more important to be the first to publish a story than to necessarily get the story completely right. This isn't to say that no one checks their sources. There are many excellent popular publications with good reputations for accuracy, but that in this field, speed is of the essence. As such, popular sources, when they're reviewed at all, are generally only edited for style and to avoid lawsuits. These sources are also generally funded by ad revenue, and thus I'll include a lot of advertising in one form or another. So with all this in mind, how do you choose the information sources for your research question? If you remember back to our discussion in part one, your research question helps you determine the type of information you need. So the first thing you need to consider is, what is your question? Will you need to get basic facts to be familiar with your topic? Then your first stop will be to look for reference sources. Do you need first-hand accounts to establish facts? Then you're going to be looking for primary sources. Do you need sources that establish the significance of an event and give you a view that considers multiple perspectives? Then you're looking for a secondary source. Are you writing for a general audience? Popular sources may be all you need. Do you need insider information to talk to groups in a specific profession? You're probably going to be looking for trade sources. Do you need carefully reviewed works written by experts to help you situate your own research project? You're going to need peer-reviewed scholarly sources. Your research question and your audience determine the types of information sources you need. In any of these cases, you can talk to a librarian or contact the library through phone, email, text, or chat and get help finding the sources you need. We're here to help you navigate through all the stuff out there.